Good evening, this is Tina. In this video, we are going to talk about the architecture in Hibernate. So let's start. Suppose now we are using uh, work with Java applications. Okay, so this part is our Java application. Java application. Okay. And in the Java applications, we have the domain objects, right? We have a domain classes. Eventually, they are going to become objects, right? Those objects, we want them to be directly persist into the database. And on the right side, we have our database. And this database is a relational database. Okay, so you have tables, you have uh, uh, columns and rows. And where is the Hibernate located? Hibernate is the bridge, right? Hibernate is the bridge between your Java applications and with the database. So this part is the Hibernate. You oh good oh my god just like this I don't want to do again hibernate and in this video we're gonna talk about what's inside the hibernate okay it's gonna help you to understand why do I need to code like this the first thing uh, since you we already talk about the Spring. Spring has a lot of configurations. And here it also has the configurations. Okay. So Hibernate has uh, requires you to provide the configuration for it. So what is this configuration do? Okay. This configuration will tell how to connect to the database like the URL, like the driver class, username, password to connect to a database. And uh, uh, probably you want to see, uh, show the SQL or format the SQL or, or, or what, what others, uh, or dialect. Suppose you are using my SQL, I want to generate the SQL, which matches my SQL, not match to the SQL server, right? And there's a very, very important thing is you have to tell where to find those domain classes. Okay, because in the domain classes, you have the JPA annotations. Those annotations will tell Hibernate how to map each domain class into the table in the relational database and each property or instance fields in the class, how to match to the columns. And also if you have relationships, how to match to them. So in configuration, you have to tell where to find those classes. Okay, so how to do the configurations? They have uh, many different ways. I'll just put it here, okay. The configurations can be done in hibernate.properties file. But this one I rarely use, okay. And uh, you can using uh, XML file called uh, Hibernate U dot CFG configuration XML file, okay. And this file, if you put it under the resources uh, meta info, it will automatically load for you. And if you want to using Java classes, you can do. Uh, probably you have to annotate with uh, configurations. Uh, for the entire playlist, I will not uh, because I want to have a playlist to show the features for Hibernate alone. So I want to using Spring framework. But most of the time when we work with Hibernate, you're gonna using Spring. And when we using Spring, Spring provide a way to integrate with Hibernate. So you want to use Hibernate properties and the XML files, you will integrate with a Spring and a Spring provide you um, uh, uh, integration way to do that, okay? 
So this is the configuration, okay? So who will use the configuration? When we do what? When we do spring call and the spring call, we will spring call. When we start a spring project, right? We have to provide the configuration files and the configuration file, we will start the application using the configuration files and we will get a bean factory or we will get a, a, a application context. The same thing in Hibernate, you will have something called the session factory. Session factory will use the configuration to start the application, to set the application, okay? Uh, to make sure your application is ready. And the session factory is used to create a session. And the session factory in one application, most likely you will only have one session factory, okay, singleton. Okay, session factory, read the configuration files to start the application. Make sure all the things are ready for you to use. And based on the name, you will know what a session factory do, which is create a session. What is a session used for? Uh, sorry, uh, step uh, back, okay. How to get a session? Session factory is used to create a session. If you want to use a session, if you want to work with a database, you have to get a session and through the session factory. So what is session do? Session will provide you a lot of a query, or I should say API, okay? Those APIs, you can use them to operate the database. Okay, you can use them to operate the database. Got it? Those API is what? Those API like persist, remove, merge, and what's the input for the API is the domain object. Okay, so session, this object, will have the APIs like persist. So persist, which means a save. And what's the value in the persist? Is the instance of the domain object. And when using session.persist, okay, it will save this object into the database as a record. But it does not directly work with the database. Instead, it have to go through one thing which is called uh, first-level cache. Okay, uh, in Hibernate, the first-level cache sometimes we are called session. What is the first-level cache doing? First-level cache will hold all the objects matches to uh, records in the database. So here, give this again. We persist in persist this object, right? This object will saved into the first level cache. And if you commit or close your connection, then it hibernate will trying to save this object into the database. Okay. And again, suppose you want to fetch particular object or a collection of object in the database, it's gonna be what? It's gonna be the records, which means a uh, one row, two row, or three row. And uh, those records will be turned into an object, right? And those objects are saved in the first level cache. So the next time, if you make the query, the, uh, make the same query again, it won't uh, reach the database again. It will just grab the information from the first level cache to uh, improve the performance. And the first level cache only exists when your session exists, is, al is alive. Uh, let's talk about a web application. When every web application will have a request, right? When you have a request comes, every request will associate with a new session. So those first level cache only exist in one request, okay? Which means if you have two requests, they don't share the they don't share the first level cache. 
So if you make the query uh, multiple times, several uh, make the same query multiple times, it will uh, reach the database several times. If you want to solve the problems, you can have another technique, which is the second level cache. Second level cache is shared between several sessions. And most of the time, we will say second level cache is associated with the session factory because session factory is for the entire application. But the first level cache is only for one session, one request. So if you want, you can set up your second level cache. But the second level cache is not implemented in Hibernate. Instead, it provides an integration. So you have to provide a provider for the second level cache. And the most common provider is called the EH cache. OK. Uh, so this is the session and the query and the first level cache and the second level cache. OK. And we have one more remaining. I want to change the color. OK. One more remaining is called what? One thing. When you work with database, you must have transaction. Transaction is used for data persistence, uh, consistency, right? And uh, if it fails, it provides a way for you to roll back, OK? And uh, those terms are used in Hibernate. But uh, sometimes we don't suggest that you directly work with uh, Hibernate APIs. Because if you want to switch to another implementation of uh, JPA, and you have to change the code. So we prefer when you code with, uh, when you want to use JPA and you choose Hibernate, we suggest you, you, we suggest you still work with the JPA um, APIs. OK, so you don't need to change the code if you change the vendor. And for JPA, some of them, they have a different name. So for Session Factory, in JPA, it is called Entity Manager. Uh, sorry, Entity Manager Factory. Uh, I don't want to cover this part. It is called Entity Manager Factory. OK, because those domain model, we will have a special name when we work with Hibernate. We call them entity. That's why. And uh, entity manage factory is to create, is used to create entity manager. And entity manager is to use to manage the entity. So for the session inside the JPA, Java Persistent API, we call entity manager. OK. And from them, you uh, you know what it's doing, right? Entity manager is to man maintain or manage the entities, like uh, to do persist or, or save, uh, persist, merge, update, other things. And the first level cache uh, in entity man uh, in the JPA, sometimes it, they will call persistence context. Okay. Anyway, it's a container hold the object related to the database. Okay. So that's it for this video. And uh, we talk about the Hibernate in, uh, architecture. Hope after watching this video, help you understand uh, what Hibernate uh, behind the thing does. Okay. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.